放水，全部，全部。We've come here to the oyster farm in Portland, Dorset, where they grow oysters to supply the famous Crab House Cafe. Traditionally in Dorset, aquaculture has been all about farming shellfish, but aquaculture is so much more than that. My name is Martin Sutcliffe, and part of my current role is to promote aquaculture in Dorset. We're going to take a look at the careers and opportunities available locally, and then look into the exciting future for aquaculture across the county. My name's Dave, I've been farming oysters for about 14 years. His name's Fletcher, I don't even know his surname yet. He has worked outdoors before, so we gave him a trial. He only started on Monday. The first day that I came in for my trial, there, Dave actually took me right to the deep end, so I thought, this is, this is great, so I'm going to get really stuck in. It's a bit deep yet. Don't forget, the sunshine and blue skies, lovely. Come here in January and February, it's a different ball game altogether. Instead of that water being as it is today, nearly 11 degrees, January, February, it's down to three degrees. But you still have to go up there every day or every other day and bring oysters back. Don't drop the rubbers. <laughs> It's just nice to get out and do a job out in the outdoors, like get in the rain, the sleet, the snow. Yeah, love it. Sun. <laughs> I mean, it's no good beating about the bush and telling you it's a soft, easy job because it's all weather job. It's hard work, and it's wet work, and it's cold work. I'm a fairly resilient guy, so I'll probably be here next year through the winter. We bring them in, we grade them. The ones we require, we put into trays, take them into what we call the tank room and immerse them in the purification tanks. After 42 hours, they can go into the restaurant or they can go to any outside sales that wants to buy them off us. I, I never really thought about becoming any sort of um, fisherman or anything like that with regards to aquaculture. Just never thought of it, never dreamed about it, but here I am. Yeah, I'm loving it so far. I am Fletcher Button, and I'm the Crab House Cafe oyster farmer. Beats pushing pencils, doesn't it? <laughs> so I moved down to Portland to work for Native Marine Centre. One of my big breaks in aquaculture was meeting Mike Webb. Mike's one of the key players locally in the aquaculture sector. He's always full of good ideas and has gone on to set up Dorset Cleaner Fish. I was just building a few new bits and pieces for the uh, hatchery. Um, just improving a few walkways that we can now do because we've got a bit more money in the business. When we first started Dorset Cleaner Fish, it really was a struggle. We built everything on a shoestring. Everything was upcycled. Everything was either begged, borrowed or stolen from eBay or friends and family. Basically, my original business was Native Marine Centre, where I was catching native marine species for institutions focusing on education and research. And I was approached to uh, see if I could find lumpfish brood stock because it was a, a new fish that was highly of interest to the salmon farmers. So uh, a lump fish is basically used as a cleaner fish and they will literally go up to a salmon and directly eat the parasites from the sides of the salmon. And the beauty of using a fish opposed to a chemical. And luckily we were the only people in the UK at the time that could find these fish and um, it enabled us to start a pilot project with some males and females showing that we could actually um, get the eggs to hatch and look after the fish. And it's kept us busy ever since. Basically our eggs are now imported from Norway. They come into our hatchery where um, the eggs are looked after by our hatchery manager, Rio. Rio came to us um, basically as an academic, as our local biologist. He's got the most important job on the firm, if you like, to keep an eye on all the health of the small juvenile fish. So every time we get eggs in, it's quite an exciting time. Um, the eggs are quite precious. Um, I'm a bit of a mother hen when they come in, and I'm quite protective over them. You've got to be so careful with the water parameters and also make sure that we're monitoring the health of the eggs when there's larvae hatching. Conservation is really important to me and I think aquaculture is vital to make sure that we are protecting our oceans and the species in our oceans. We're not pumping chemicals into the oceans basically to, to eradicate sea life, so it's a biological alternative. I have got an undergraduate in marine biology and then I've got a master's in marine biology and conservation and I have come to this job in aquaculture to look at 
the research side of um, this facility. I quite enjoy cleaning the tanks because I'm not expected to be on the computer all the time. <laughs> because it's so, so small and delicate, we need to be extra intricate with our cleaning. Um, we also make sure the fish are happy and as long as the water clarity is nice and clear, then we've done the, done the right job for the day. So we wanted to expand our team. I just wanted another academic team member on, on our side to be sort of my assistant and come up to my level of a role in research. We chose Geoffrey because he had an undergraduate degree and some background basic experience in aquaculture, which is exactly what we were looking for. In aquaculture and fisheries, the, there is so much you can research in regards to marine biology, such as fish health and you know, grading and research in different aspects of fish anatomy and aquaculture is huge. It's not just lumpfish, it's seaweed and mussels and oyster farms. The nice thing about aquaculture is you don't really have to all be an academic. One of the things I've really enjoyed about working with this project is basically just giving young people a start and giving them the opportunity to actually try something new and completely different without the qualifications, if you like. In the nursery, there's uh, Dan, who's a work experience lad. She's interested in aquaculture and wants to see if he'd like to get into it. There's Jack, Jack Coburn. He's basically worked his way up from just being a technician to now being assistant manager, and um, we're really proud of him. Jack's um, training up Jeffrey as he's just joined us, and he's showing him around the whole plant. And the little guys will stop in here for now, but we'll move them out at a later date. So today we're grading these lump fish, just separating out the smaller guys from the larger guys. They go into Scotland, they're going to the salmon farms and these are used to pick the lice off of the salmon. So we're getting them ready to go up on the lorries. I was originally working in Portland Port doing the bunkering and the fueling of the cargo ships that come in. Mike, he came along one night and asked if I'd like a job working with him cleaning the fish tanks on the farm. And um, I was a bit reluctant at first, but I said I'd give it a try and I started doing weekends for him and uh, after a while I really enjoyed it and um, he'd asked me if I'd like to come on full time. You remember this one, don't you, Jeffrey? Yeah. yeah. Those lovely markings on him from last time. I got on really well with everybody here and within a year I'd managed to make it to assistant manager. If I'm honest, I hadn't thought about aquaculture as a career at all. I wasn't even aware that this was operating within the local area, but now I'm into it, I really like to further my career in aquaculture. Oh, oh, cheers, mate. We have got a mix of academics and people who don't have the academia behind them, but it makes up the perfect team, if you like, because it's a, it's a really nice balance and we all learn off each other and it's a, a really nice sort of young crew all together that we just bounce off each other, which is the nicest thing about it all, really. So the new project that we're really excited about is seaweed. We're lucky enough to work in Portland Harbour, which supports a huge variety of seaweed that's found all year round. And uh, I'm really looking forward to just starting the new aquaculture project right out there. We've come down now to a local beach in the harbour to have a look at what wild varieties of seaweed are here. I'm here today with my friend and luckily my mentor who's um, helped me start this project, Hugh Wiltshire. Together we set up the Dorset Seaweed Company. One of the most important things about this project is we must use local native species of seaweed. Basically, we're out today just looking for sugar kelp. That's the species we really want to farm. But the most important thing is that you don't bring any non-native species into the area so that it can compromise any of the local ecosystems. So as far as seaweed farming goes and aquaculture, um, it's probably one of the least environmental impacting uh, types of farming you could really do. Um, it really doesn't need too much attention. Uh, if you compare it to other farming, we, there's no fertilizers, there's no fresh water usage. Um, you know, it just grows with sunlight and the natural nutrients in the surrounding environment. It can really boost the local area for the marine life. Right, let's see what we got. Beautiful sugar kelp. Oh, that's a lovely example. This is the one where we're aiming to cultivate. This is spaghetti weed. It's obvious why it's called uh, spaghetti weed. Um, and we have a license to uh, cultivate uh, this one as well. This is the third seaweed that we've got a license to cultivate. Um, it's called dulse. It's um, very popular in London with the gourmets. They're having scallops on a bed of dulse. It's also known as the, uh, the vegan bacon, and it's eight times nutritionally viable as a spinach. So it's a really tasty seaweed. 
So now we've found the samples of sugar kelp, we're going to send some samples to SAMS, which is the Scottish Association of Marine Science. The seaweed will be put into settling tanks where the spores will settle onto ropes and hopefully send us back some seeded spores, which we can put out in the harbour. Six weeks on, we've managed to get our seeded spools back from SAMS and now we're going to take them out into the harbour and deploy them onto our long lines. The big square blocks are basically four tonne anchors. They're concrete blocks that will basically anchor each end of the long line. Today's really exciting. We're putting our moorings into the sea. You know, this is the start of the seaweed farm. On board today, we have Sam as our skipper. We have Jerry as our first mate. We have Cliff as a second mate, myself and uh, Hugh. And that's the, the crew for today. Sam's really enthusiastic. That guy's like a Swiss army knife when it comes to working on the seas. He's a lovely lad, there's not much he can't do. He's a valuable hand to the project for deploying the heavy four-ton anchors, which, to be honest, it's hard to find a boat on the south coast that can manage it. They're dropped either end 150 metres apart, um, where basically we just hang a leaded rope in between those, and basically that will support the seaweed as it grows. It's so easy to deploy. We basically just slide the spool onto the line. Um, we just got a steady pace driving the boat and the line literally spins itself around the rope as we go. There's the small amount of growth on this spool here where the seaweed is obviously um, settled onto the ropes. You can already see there's small little brown flecks which indicate the seaweed is growing. And then we literally just let the seaweed do its work. Once it grows, it secures itself by its natural hold fast and it anchors into the rope. And this can just be left to do its own thing for probably a uh, good six months and fingers crossed by then we'll have a nice harvest. Seaweed, it seems to be the new thing. There's a lot of different applications it can go into. It's so versatile, anything from human consumption, animal consumption, fertilizers, biofuels, pharmaceuticals, you name it. It's a great source for uh, packaging and the alternative use of plastics as well. So as far as biodegradable things like that go, and it's a it's a win-win for the environment. And hopefully once we've proved that the trial can work, we can really upscale this and hopefully open up more doors and involve more people. Gary's a bottle nose dolphin. He's just a lovely guy who cruises up and down making friends with people in the harbour all day long. <laughs> Come back, Gary! <laughs> it's, it's, it is a good sign to see Gary coming out and making sure that um, he's happy with our progress with the seaweed. He's checking on us and keeping an eye on us. And I take that as a blessing to say the seaweed's going to be a success. It's really nice to see after the naval base pulled out and everything else that an industry like this is coming back into the area and hopefully it can breed a lot of new life into uh, the fishing industry or just the local um, interest in aquaculture in general. We're hoping that this is really going to drum up enough excitement and really create some jobs in the area, you know. Portland Harbour as itself, it's, it's got so much history and I'm hoping that this is just going to be the next sort of story for the harbour and it's a completely new one. So I've come up to the top of the Isle of Portland and behind me you can see the famous Chesil Beach and nestled in behind that the Fleet Lagoon where the oyster farm is. Over in the far northeast corner of the port is where the seaweed trials are taking place. So this really is an exciting time for aquaculture in Dorset. Watch this space. <laughs>